Hello, Jess here from All the Sparkle, and I'm thrilled to be taking part in a Harry Potter blog hop today. Several crafters have gotten together to create cards inspired by our love of Harry Potter, and I decided to create an interactive pop-up card focusing on the famous Patronuses from the Harry Potter series. I did take a few liberties with the animals I chose to represent Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, and Luna, but hopefully they'll make sense with a few extra special touches. So let's get started. First, I created the starry night sky background for my card by blending Distress Oxide inks onto a 5.5 by 8.5 inch piece of Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper. I wanted the front of the card to be visible when you open the card, which is why I used such a large panel. I started by blending Wilted Violet ink onto the paper with a blending tool. Then I added Salty Ocean, covering most but not all of the purple. I also blended a little cracked pistachio ink onto the panel. Finally, I covered the panel with black soot ink. I allowed a little of the color to peek through here and there to add some dimension to my sky. Since I was using the oxide inks, which tend to stay wetter longer, I held the paper in place with a paper towel so I wouldn't get finger smudges on it. After applying the black, I added a little more cracked pistachio and salty ocean. At this point, it didn't really look much like a sky, but just wait. I let the oxide inks dry for a few minutes and then spritzed the panel with water. I blotted off the excess water with a paper towel and then repeated the process using a smaller water spritzer so that the droplets of water would be finer. After the water dried, I placed the paper in a box to protect my work surface and then spritzed the panel with W plus 9 shimmer spray. I blasted that with a heat gun and then placed it back in the box. Next I wanted to add stars to the background, so I squirted a little white paint onto an acrylic block with a few drops of water and then used a paintbrush to mix the paint and water together and then flick the paint onto the panel. I set that panel aside to dry completely while I worked on the rest of my card. I stamped several animals from various Mama Elephant sets onto Nina Solar White cardstock with Copic Friendly Intense Black ink and then colored them with Copics. I'll list the Copics I used on each animal on my blog for easy reference. I'm sure someone will notice that I tend to take off the ends of both markers when I work. When I first started using Copic markers a few years ago, I had lots of problems with ink blooping all over the page when I worked, and someone suggested that I take off both ends to equalize the pressure in the marker. As someone who was just beginning, I thought that they meant to take off the ends the entire time you were working, versus just uncapping them to equalize pressure, and then putting one back on. So it really just became a bad habit of mine that I take both ends off. It's absolutely not necessary to do that. If you read or watch the Harry Potter series, you know that Harry's Patronus is a stag. I didn't have a stag stamp, so I decided that the reindeer would work in a pinch. Later I added his signature round glasses and a scar with a Copic multi-liner to make him a little more recognizable. For Ginny's horse and Ron's Jack Russell Terrier, I steered towards reddish tones and of course a few freckles to give them that signature Weasley look. Finally I added a sunflower to Luna's hair as she believed sun colors were a sign of good luck.
After they were all colored, I used my scan and cut to cut out each one and then colored the white border with my N6 marker to better fit in with the dark background. And then it was assembly time. First I prepped my night sky panel with my powder tool and stamped the sentiment from Simon Says Stamps if the hat fits on the top half of the panel with Versamark before heat embossing it with silver embossing powder. Next I scored the panel at 4 and a quarter inches and trimmed an eighth of an inch from the top of the panel. Next I took a 5.5 by 8.5 inch panel of black cardstock that I scored in half and tucked the Galaxy panel around the top half of the black cardstock to create my card base. At the top of the fold on the black cardstock you can see that I traced a half circle with a pencil which will be used to create a notch for my night sky panel. I used an X-Acto knife to cut along that half circle and then erase the pencil markings. I checked to make sure the notch would fit and then set it aside. Before going any further, I ran my night sky panel through my Big Shot to die cut three stars from the top left corner of the bottom half of the watercolor night sky panel. There are three stars at the top of the pages in the Harry Potter books and I thought this would be a fun way to tie that into my card design. After I die cut the stars, I tucked the night sky panel around the black cardstock base and traced the stars onto the black panel. I wanted the stars to shine with LED stickers, so I needed to see where I'd want to place each light sticker on the black cardstock. I used the template from Chibitronics to trace the triangular lights over the stars and marked the negative and positive side of each sticker. Finally, I lightly sketched the circuit template onto my card for reference. No matter how many times I use Chibitronics LED stickers, I always like to sketch out my template before I begin. Before adhering the battery holder to my card, I needed to adhere the pop-up element. I die cut the stitched hillside pop-up from Lawn Fawn with black cardstock and adhered it to the inside of my card, but I didn't attach the hills until later. I adhered my battery holder to the inside of my card and then started laying out my circuit with copper tape. When applying copper tape, make sure that you use one continuous piece of tape to connect all the negative sides of the light stickers and the battery, and a second continuous piece of tape to connect the positive sides. To create a corner, simply fold the tape back on itself, creasing it in the opposite direction from where you want to go, and then fold it forward in the direction you want it to go. If you cut the tape at each angle, your circuit will not work correctly. After applying the copper tape, I added each light sticker and then tested the circuit by placing the battery in the holder. I didn't want the words or design of the light sticker to be visible through the card, so I took a scrap piece of vellum, folded it three times, and adhered that behind the die cut stars. The triple layer of vellum allows the lights to shine through, but hides the actual sticker. I applied Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle to the vellum to make my stars extra sparkly.
Next, I applied ATG adhesive to the back of the bottom half of my Night Sky watercolor panel and then adhered that over the circuit panel. Since the battery is on the bottom of the actual card base, hidden behind the pop-up, you don't need to use foam mounting tape as the card is fairly flat except for the actual battery. Then I applied adhesive to the back of the stitch tail pop-up flaps and folded the card flat so the adhesive would stick to the night sky panel, creating my pop-up stitch tails. I decided to go over the edges of my animals with my N6 Copic marker to cover up any white cardstock showing through, and then adhered the Luna Sunflower to her ear using glossy accents. Finally, I adhered the Patronuses to my stitched hills with ATG adhesive. Of course, I paired up Hermione's Otter and Ron's Jack Russell Terrier and Harry's Stag with Ginny's Horse, and then left Luna's hair to hang out on her own hill. And here's the card all closed up and tucked in. You can see why I trimmed the night sky panel a little shorter so that it would tuck neatly into the notch. You can open the card like a regular greeting card and the animals pop up to greet you. I tucked a paper clip around the battery to keep the card lit, but would remove it to conserve the battery for mailing. To make your night sky even grander, you can untuck the panel from the notch and unfold it to reveal the entire night sky and sentiment. And that's it! Every stop on the hop is giving away a prize, so head to my blog for all the details. You can find links to all of the products I used, including a list of Copic markers, in the YouTube description below or on my blog. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button so you won't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching, have a fabulous day, and happy crafting! Bye!